Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer from the Kidderminster Izmir team on Thursday the 14th of January. I hope this beginning of the day finds you in good heart, encouraged, even amidst all that we're going through as a country, as a world. It's good that we can find this regular space to come to pray, to open our lives, to create a space for God to speak to us, for God to fill us with his spirit. As part of this prayer this morning, I'll be reading a short reflection from the spiritual writer Henry Nouwen, who talks about regularity and simplicity in our prayer, and creating a space for God's spirit to dwell. As we pray, the psalm today is Psalm 21, and I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 as our reading. So as we greet the day, let's draw breath, still ourselves, and open our hearts, our minds, our ears to what God might say to us as we pray together this morning. Amen. Lighting a candle to remind us of God's light and life. God is with us always. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. On the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel Sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 21 The king shall rejoice in your strength, O Lord. How greatly shall he rejoice in your salvation. You have given him his heart's desire and have not denied the request of his lips. For you come to meet him with blessings of goodness, and set a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asked of you life, and you gave it him, length of days, for ever and ever. His honour is great because of your salvation. Glory and majesty have you laid upon him. You have granted him everlasting felicity and will make him glad with joy in your presence. For the king puts his trust in the Lord. Because of the loving kindness of the Most High, he shall not be overthrown. Your hand shall mark down your enemies. Your right hand will find out those who hate you. You'll make them like a fiery oven in the time of your wrath. The Lord will swallow them up in his anger and the fire will consume them. Their fruit you will root out of the land and their seed from among its inhabitants. Because they intend evil against you and devise wicked schemes which they cannot perform. 
you will put them to flight and you aim your bow at their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own might. You will make music and sing of your power. Crown us, O God, but with humility and robe us with compassion, that as you call us into the kingdom of your Son, you may strive to overcome all evil by the power of good, and so walk gently on the earth with you, our God, for ever. Above you, the Holy One arises, and above you, God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. Glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. The Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendor. You shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. From 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarrelling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? When one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labour of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, the work of each builder will become visible, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each has done. If what has been built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a reward. If the work is burned, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in you? 
anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. But it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast about human leaders. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future, all belong to you, and you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. Do you not know that you are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells in you. What about the deal? So that each of us, how might we nurture that sense of being a home in which God will give his spirit and his spirit will find a home. Prayer is a key to that. Regular prayer. It's nothing innate or complicated, but the simplicity of prayer. I'll read a short reflection from the writer Henry Nouwen in his book, Making All Things New. Simplicity and regularity are the best guides in finding our way. They allow us to make the discipline of solitude as much a part of our daily lives as eating and sleeping. When that happens, our noisy worries will slowly lose their power over us, and the renewing activity of God's Spirit will slowly make its presence known. Although the discipline of solitude asks us to set aside time and space, what finally matters is that our hearts become like quiet cells where gods can dwell, wherever we go and whatever we do. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. And the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be for ever. Amen. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations.
so let's just pray. Thank you that you make your home in us by your spirit. You are the life of Jesus within us and among us. Thank you that when we come to you in prayer, we make that space for you simply but regularly. We all know your life within us. Life that's not confined simply to the times when we pray, when we gather, when we're able. That your spirit, your life is with us and we're in us, within us, wherever we go and whatever we do. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life gift of this day. It may be uncertain what this day will hold. May we be ready to accept what is good, and what we may find hard, still to be your gift to us. Let's learn more about ourselves more about the things, the people, the places we value. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the gift of life that binds us together as your church, your body here on earth. you for the gift of technology that enables us to do things together, to pray, to worship, to meet. Help us to remember that we are always united in your love, even when we are physically apart. In your mercy, hear our prayer. About your world, all that is going on within it. We think of those people, perhaps who we do not see as often as we would like to. from whom we are separated. Those we have loved but see no longer. We trust that all are held in your care. May your blessing, your peace, your comfort, your healing rest upon them. And in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in this day ahead, give us the eyes to see you, heart to seek you. Willingness to receive you. thankful for all that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Lord Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, 
grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. into the rest of this day. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.